Welcome back to my channel and project number one, Jules from Vintage Chic at Jules. Now I've chosen a gorgeous wee rectangular coffee table. I'm going to show you a before shot of the whole table mixed in with the after. I am going to be using some Newton's paints today. One is linen and it's sort of like a, a taupey sort of colour. That light's not particularly good at all. And then I'm going to overlay that with a coat of... The duck egg blue. That's what happens when you're right in front of a window. So I'm not going to spend the whole time with you guys watching me paint. I've already prepped this piece with a scrub down of Sally's sugar soap and warm water. I've used um, just an old kitchen scourer, not too heavy handed, nice and light. And then I've rubbed it off with a damp cloth to remove the suds and I've let it dry, just air dry for a few more minutes after that as well. So what I'm going to do, I'll lay down that very first coat of paint. I'm not sure how I speed this video up to get me through the process. So what I'm going to do is hit the pause button. You guys can go make a cup of tea if you want to, or you can just sit and wait very patiently and I will be back. So I'll start off with this. Um, because I'm using chalk paint, the only prep that we need to do is the scrub down with the, the sugar. So as I said, Sally's, I bought that from Mitre 10 Mega. Um, I'm not sure if you can get that from a supermarket. You probably can. You'd probably find it, I would say, if they had it in the, the area where they have um, the weed killers and the candles and all that sort of stuff. Not 100% sure, as I said, so pop along and see if you can find it. I'm going to link in the Newton's website, the Newton's website, so you can um, check out their fantastic chalk paint and other accessories. This is another one of their wee babies. This is a two inch chalk paintbrush. I haven't used one of these before, so this is going to be new to me. I'm looking forward to the results. I'm going to obviously do a wee bit of a de-stress um, at the end. Probably going to start with a wet distress after I put that second coat of duck egg on, and then if I think it needs any more, I'll, I'll knock out the mouth sander and see how we go with that. So without further ado, let us start. I always start coffee table projects or um, bedside table projects, anything with legs, I always start from the bottom, yay, and work my way back down. I know it's upside down and people are going to say, well, you don't need to paint underneath, but for me, I just like to finish it off. So I might not paint it as much as I paint the top and the legs. It's easier to work from the legs down than it is to start from flip it over and start on the top and work your way down. This way you don't have to worry about um, paint hitting the floor because you're getting down to the legs. It's upside down. I also like to have it on a drop cloth. We're in my dining room. It's really, really tiny. So cram for space. It's sitting here. I'm going to get started with a couple of coats or a couple of strokes of this beauty with this brush. And I'm just going to see how it comes up. And I'm thinking it's going to be really nice. Now with your first coat too, you don't have to be too perfect with it. You just want to get a good coverage on, um, remembering that you're going to distress it back and you are, you're you going to put a coat of duck egg on top of it anyway. And that's where your, your main distressing is going to come in. I've worked on a lot of these tables and I say I absolutely love these wee coffee tables. They're just gorgeous. I've got one at the moment that I finished in duck egg blue, but it was a straight duck egg blue as opposed to the linen and the duck egg blue. So I'm really looking forward to see how the, these two colours are actually going to come out together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the pause button so you don't have to worry about watching every single stroke. And then I will be back when I'm done to show you what the finished first coat looks like. And I think I'll grab a cup of tea myself. So I'll talk to you soon. Righto, we're back. I've popped the first coat of linen onto this coffee table. I'm really liking it. It looks quite white in the video, I can see, but it is a real taupe taupe, however you pronounce it, it's all good with me. It's that really nice light, light, light blushy brown colour going on. 
and I love it. I think it's going to look really, really cool under the duck egg blue. Now, while I'm waiting for that to dry, and with chalk paint, you don't have to wait forever either. It only takes about 20 minutes or 30 minutes to actually dry hard enough that you can pop your next coat on. So what I thought we might do is I will take you through to my lounge, and I'll show you a couple of projects that I finished in the last month or so, and you'll get a general idea of what I do and how I stage it once I've done it. So come with me. All this is one of my favorite pieces that I've done. I've just finished it about three weeks ago. It's part of my blush collection. Oh, there's Ruby coming into shot. Bless her little cotton tails. Um, blush pink on the bottom. I did a blended pink white in the middle and then the white at the top. The stencil is a raised stencil. And I'm going to show you how to do one of those in another tutorial. But I've actually taken it over the, tim the timber between the two drawers as well. So that it's got that completed look to the that one design. I carried that through onto the top with um, the blush pink. This unit was a really strange colour of white. I'm thinking probably an ivory white. So I just painted it the white white that I love. The drawpulls were ceramic numbers that I had that I really didn't like at all. I just put down a coat of chalk paint on the straight on the ceramic and then painted them out with what's called mink pearl and I got a little bottle of that. I'll show you that later from Spotlight. This plate here is my all-time favorite and it was my inspiration for my blush collection. It was a little a little dish that I bought from one of the op shops, Habitat or Host, um, Hospice. I painted it the blush and then I took a little damp cloth and rubbed off some of the um, the detailing and this rose gold came through as well as the silver plate. So that inspired me to do my whole collection of um, blush, pink furniture and home um, decor items as well. So the little picture frame at the front, that's got um, quite a bit of the rose gold paint on it, it's a metallic paint. I have hunted high and low for this and the only place I found it was on a crafting website here in um, New Zealand. So I'll put a link in the description below so you can head along and have a look at that as well. The other thing that I've done in my blush pink is this little vignette. It was a silver plate tray that cost me I think a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty in one of the op shops. An old Christmas decoration Eiffel Tower the jug and the little dish that's also got some really nice detailing on it a couple of dollars from the same hospice shop or habitat whichever one it was and then a little candle as well it just i think it just gives it a wee bit of a wee bit of elegance to it i love it i absolutely adore it and swinging around this way this unit used to be in my dining room and it was a $50 buy on Trade Me. Oh, and the other one with the blush collection was a $50 buy on Trade Me as well. So I grabbed this. I love it. Um, I painted it up. This is pretty much my distressed chippy look that I always go for. And bought the draw pulls from a trader on Trade Me. Absolutely love those as well. I'm a big fan of Ducky Blue. Absolutely love it. So this dressing table had been hiding out in someone's garage on a farm. It did have a mirror. The mirror was broken and the sort of the framing for the mirror, one part had broken off altogether. So what I did, I'll just bring this over here. What I did was I cut it off completely and I drilled a hole in it and just popped a draw pull in it just to give it a bit of something. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it that colour or whether I'll paint them out. The bottles I picked up from Mitre 10 Mega here in Invercargill. The big one was $10, the medium one was 8 and the small one was 5 The little one in the front I already had and I picked up the Big Ben paperweight from Mitre 10 as well. The tray is a find, I think it was from Hospice Shop in Dunedin actually, and it was three or four dollars, just painted in the duck egg blue with a white stencil on it. This coffee pot and dish was another op shop find, um, and I think I paid $13, $14 for the two of them. That's just painted out with white chalk paint, and I grabbed some feathers that I normally have in my Christmas decorating box. I didn't actually do a big lot of um, Christmas decorating last Christmas, so they were just hanging around, and I thought they looked so cool in that. Now, I think this is probably more Art Nouveau than I'm used to and that I really like, but this piece has won me over. It really has. I love the draw pulls. I love that contrast of duck egg 
and putting the tray up the top with the bottles just sort of ties it all in together. So what we're going to do, I'll head back to the dining room and I will show you the other side of that table. So walk with me, walk with me, walk with me through the lounge, through my big basket of painting bits and pieces. Right, so close up of the table. If I come around this way, maybe, nope, come around this way, you might get a better idea of colours as well. That's a wee bit better. It's still dark, but that's a wee bit better. So what I will do is wait for that to dry. It's going to be probably another 15-20 minutes. We'll pop this on pause again and I will see you back here shortly for our ducky blue layer. Righto lovelies, we are ready for coat number one of our ducky blue paint. And I have a nice clean chalk paint brush. And we're going to put this on here and see exactly what it looks like. And I'm not going to be too concerned about filling in every little nook and cranny because it's going to be distressed anyway. This, is, I haven't used the Newton's Duck Egg Blue before. This is beautiful. This is really, really nice. So, I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes or so just putting this on here, getting every part of it covered that I want to get covered. And then I'm going to do a wet distress and we'll see what the results look like. So we will be back very soon. Pause button again. Okay, so first layer of dark egg. I'm not even going to put a second one on. I am going to start wet distressing now and see how it comes out. I'm probably, as I said, I'll probably put on, oh yeah, I'm probably going to put on um, attack it with the sander obviously you want to do the parts that are going to get the most wear and tear so it's edges and I'm liking how that's coming up it's got a really lovely look of linen coming through as well which I really like so just going to take the edges back and a little bit. Of that as well. Yeah, I am really happy with this paint. I'm happy with the colours. That linen and the duck egg blue are really, really lovely together. I'm pleased that I've done that. So we'll just keep taking some edges off, like so. This technique is so easy and it's the results are really, really, fan, they're fantastic. Sorry, can't say that off, can't say it often enough, can I? It is coming out absolutely gorgeous. And people go, well, hey, you're wiping off the new paint you've just put on. That's the whole idea. You want to get all of the, the different colours. It could have multiple colours on any item that you've, uh, that you've got, especially if it's really old. And you can always tell an old piece, not only by the, the distressing on it, the natural distressing from knocks and scrapes and bumps, but also with the layers of paint. You see layer upon layer upon layer and you get the whole lot come through at once and it just, it, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I know a lot of people don't like distress and you know, they just want to see the whole thing completely covered with paint or they want to take it back and they want to sand it or they want to strip it. That's cool. Each to their own. But I am really impressed with the colours. I'm impressed with... It's not thick, it's not too thick, it's not too thin, it's it's really, really nice. So I'm going to let that dry completely and then we're going to flip it over and we'll start the process again with the linen as the uh, the first coat. Then we'll put on another dark egg blue and distress it back across the top and I think it's going to look absolutely fantastic. So I will be back very, very, very shortly.
Guys, I'm just going to give you a close-up on how this is looking. You can see the linen underneath the duck egg blue, and you can also see the original color of the table, which is what I wanted. That's what gives you the layered look. And having the linen on there, I think, gives it a wee bit of depth as well. Righto, so here is our finished result. We've got the duck egg blue over the linen. Nice little bit of wet distressing is all that it's taken. And I'm really, really happy with it. Oh, here's Ruby again and Rain standing over there wanting to be in on the action as well. I will be back again next Sunday with another video for you. Please remember to hit the subscribe and notification buttons. And I will see you then. And remember, look beyond what you see and what can be.